we're doing it outdoors, right? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> the battery, yeah. One, two, three. It's a good one. <laughs> Who gives this woman to be married on this day? We, we do. do. We do. <sighs> you may be seated. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, on behalf of Greg and Jessica, I'd like to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, the sun decided to shine for us right now. That's wonderful, and it's a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful time, a beautiful couple, family and friends together. What a wonderful celebration it is. And marriage is the greatest relationship which can exist between two people. It's the ultimate expression of friendship and love. As the intimate sharing of two lives, it must not diminish, but rather should encourage the individuality of each partner. So we may say that marriage is not a limitation, rather... It is the basis of great freedom, a freedom we call friendship, a long and lasting friendship in which each person is allowed to be who he or she really is. And there is not only the freedom to be, but also the freedom to become. Good friendship allows each person to grow and change, and relationships are strengthened by healthy growth and change. Greg and Jessica, what has brought you to this place of marriage, such things as mutual respect and understanding, as well as a deep and abiding passion, what has brought you here will go with you from here. Because of this, your love for each other will endure and will grow through the circumstances of life, which sometimes can be adverse. So in times of weakness, you'll provide each other strength, and in times of sorrow or loss, you'll provide each other comfort and hope. In this way, you will complement each other through the seasons of life. And if each of you takes responsibility for the quality of your life together, it will be marked by an abundance of delight. Greg and Jessica, from your promises today to love and care for each other will come a spiritual bonding, a deep union which goes beyond words. May you always need one another, not to fill an emptiness, but to help each other to know your fullness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. May you embrace one another, but not to encircle one another. And may you succeed in all important ways with each other, but not fail in the little graces. And may you have happiness, and may you... May you find it in making one another happy. May you have love, and may you find it in loving each other. And I've asked them to share just a little bit of their story together, of how we got to this place, in case you don't know the whole story. Uh, they met while both living and working in Sacramento, 
And on April 13th, 2007, Greg went to Luca's restaurant with some friends, and uh, some of you, of course, were there. Uh, Jessica waited on their table, and uh, she says that she was flirting, uh, but kind of talking about the antibiotic and hormone-free beef specials to Greg. <laughs> and luckily enough, they kind of hit it off, but luckily enough, they ran into each other later that night at a local pub, and uh, just a little bit of, of fate there. But they began dating, and after a few months, Jessica moved to San Francisco to go to law school. They had a long-distance relationship for a year and a half, and Greg going to San Francisco most weekends, and her taking the train to Sacramento most Wednesday nights. And they were growing all the way. And Greg proposed on August 28, 2010, went to Sacramento, and they had a great French toast at the Tower Tech Cafe. <laughs> Stopped by Jessica's old apartment for a photo, because the sidewalk outside was where they shared their first kiss. And unknown to Jess, Greg was taking video, and he got down on one knee and proposed, and they had a wonderful dinner to follow, and well, here we are. And for both of you, it's been a wonderful story, and it's beautiful how lives sometimes are woven together to bring us to places where we can fall in love with each other, discover love for one another, and then, of course, bring you to places like this here today on your wedding day, when you can proclaim your love for one another for the rest of your life. And so. You both look great, and I know I speak for all your family and friends to say that we're happy for you, we support you, and we give you our blessing today. Jessica and Greg, now take a moment to forget all the stress of planning this day. <laughs> it's been multitude, I know. And just simply enjoy your friends and family who gathered to spend this day with you. This group of loved ones will likely never be together in the same place all together again. So take a moment now to think about how each person has touched your life and why are they are here with you today. And Jessica and Greg, look at one another now and remember this moment in time. <laughs> Good job. Right. And before this moment, you have been many things to one another, a stranger, a friend, a companion, and a lover. And now you shall say a few words that take you across the threshold of life, and things will never quite be the same between you. For after these vows, you shall say to the world, this is my husband, and this is my wife. Greg, will you have Jessica as your wedded wife, to be your friend and companion, to love and to cherish? And do you promise to give her your care, loyalty and respect, in sunshine and in shadow, through all the days of your life? Will you answer, I do? I do. Jessica, will you have Greg to be your wedded husband, to be your friend and companion, to love and to cherish? And do you promise to give him your care, loyalty and respect, in sunshine and in shadow, all the days of your life? Will you answer, I do? Just a few words for you and uh, just a, a few reminders I'd like to give you. Now these are things of course that you already know, but I'd like to just remind couples of some things to remember in your marriage. Um, you know, a lot of times people will ask, well what makes for a successful marriage? Is it like matching personalities, like some kind of internet compatibility formula, or is it chemistry, which far too often just has to do with uh, feelings, you know, and how the other person makes you feel, or is it that they look good or they do things for you or they make you laugh? But really what I think it comes down to is choice. I think it becomes to comes down to choosing every day before your feet even hit the floor in the morning that I will love this other one. I have chosen to love because love is really not something that happens to you. You know, I don't like to think of it as something that you fall into because you might just as easily fall out of it if you're passive. But really, it's a choice that you make to choose the other. And so, on your wedding day here, really, what you're choosing is a few things. Of course, there's some things that you leave behind. And there's some things that you bring into your marriage. And what is it that you leave behind? Well, really what you leave behind is the self that exists only for you. Now, part of that means that you leave behind your need to always be right. Okay, now, I'm sure you've not experienced any of this, but it's kind of that stubbornly uh, demanding to have the last, last word, pridefully insisting that you're just not wrong. You know, you leave also behind your need to always get your preferences. You know, a lot of compromise is going to be a huge part of your relationship, and I'm sure it already has. But it's not, uh, it, it's not begrudgingly just to avoid a fight. It's out of sacrifice and generosity and grace. It's because you want to, because you prefer your lover over yourself. You leave behind outside allegiances that would steal your heart and your mind, such things as work and hobby and friends. And, and you both know this, but selfishness becomes the root of all marital struggles, right? It becomes all the, the root of all of our fights. It's when you kind of feel like, I'm not getting my needs or my, my wants met. 
So you selfishly refuse to give until the other deserves it. Well, you guys know that that kind of scorekeeping will lead to bitterness and frustration. And so really what you leave behind here at this moment is the self that exists only for you. But the beautiful thing about marriage is you bring things in. So what is it that you bring in? Well, you still remain independent, of course, but now you become interdependent. You, you're still two individuals, but now you function as one heart and one unit and one love, dependent on the other to make you everything that you desire to be. And so you bring in that self yeah. that gives and honors and sacrifices and respects. It's that better part of us, right? It's the better part of you. It's everything that you desire to be as you stand here today. I've asked what they love about each other. And Greg said what he loves. I love her sense of humor, shared values. She's reflective and realistic. There's no agenda for me other than my happiness. She's willing to work on making our relationship great. She matches perfectly my heart skip a beat gorgeous. She's so smart, she continually freaks me out with her ginormous brain. And, uh, <laughs> and she can watch a hockey game with me and convince me that she actually likes it. <laughs> and her for him, she says, uh, <laughs> I love that he's smart and inquisitive, curious and thoughtful conscientious and kind. I love that he's funny and energetic and loving and he works hard to protect and maintain the relationships with family and friends. And so it's those kinds of things you guys that you bring into your relationship. It's kind of a, a synergy right where the sum of the two of you together is greater than the two of you would be separately. And you guys complement each other and it's this wonderful math where you're two people but somehow one plus one equals one. Now I, I hate to warn you but there will be times when neither of you are very lovable, okay? But I want you to love anyway. And there will be times where you hurt each other, and I want you to forgive quickly. And there will be times where you just don't agree. And Greg, just know that 99% of those times it's your fault, and you guys will be just fine, okay? But one of the things you bring in also is generosity. That I, I think what happens is, as you give to the other, whether you feel like they're, they're deserving of it or not, or whether or not you're receiving it, that all of a sudden you'll find that they become more lovable. And the biggest benefit, of course, is happening within you because I truly believe the best way to have the wife or husband that you desire is to be the husband or wife that you desire to be. And so you bring in friendship and all the things that you love to do together, cooking and trying new restaurants and time outside, camping and traveling. And, and so even right now, as you guys read your vows to one another, you leave behind the individualistic self that would sabotage every reason why you're standing here. And you bring in the self that is uh, truly ready to give and honor. And marriage is this beautiful lifetime process of two people becoming one. And I hope you enjoy the journey together. Jessica, today I take you to be no other than who you are, the woman I fell in love with. And now you give me the honor to call you my wife. For that honor, I promise always to be there with you, to love you, and to make you smile, to comfort and protect you. And I promise that whatever I can provide, you shall not lack. That no matter what lies in our path, it will be our path. And I will stay the man you fell in love with. I shall love you in all times, in all ways, in all places, forever. No matter what lies in our path, it will be our path, and I will stay the woman you fell in love with. I shall love you in all times, in all places, and in all ways, forever. We well, guys have chosen rings today to signify your pledge to one another. It really rings serve as an outward show to the world of the inner commitment that you're making. A few things about the rings, of course, they're made of precious metal. It's been refined by fire, and impurities have been taken out. They are made in the form of a circle, which shows the unending nature of your love. And they say that the ancients used to place a ring on that particular finger. This is the only finger that has a line that goes directly to the heart. I give you this 
string as a sign of my promise. A sign as a sign of my promise. That wherever you are, that wherever you are, my love is with you. My love is with you. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my promise. As a sign of my promise. That wherever you are. That wherever you are. My love is with you. My love is with you. Now we're reading by Pavel. This reading is taken from Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh. When you love someone, you do not love them all the time in exactly the same way, from moment to moment. It is an impossibility. It is even a lie to pretend to. And yet, this is exactly what most of us demand. We have so little faith in the ebb and flow of life, of love, of relationships. We leap at the flow of the tide and resist in terror its ebb. We are afraid it will never return. We insist on permanency, on duration, on continuity. When the only continuity possible in life as in love is in growth, in fluidity, and in freedom. I have all the rest of your lives to meet this commitment to each other with the same love and devotion that you now possess. Before these witnesses and by the power invested in me, I pronounce you, Greg, and you, Jessica, to be husband and wife, lovers, and friends for life. Greg, would you like to kiss your bride? <laughs> and one. Woo!